All right, so once again, warm up number 65 is on the screen. Number one, it says write in slope intercept form and graph. We got 12 minus 3y equals negative 6x. Number two, it says graph f of x equals x cubed. Then graph the transformation given by g of x. And they give us g of x equals f of x minus 5, close parentheses, plus 2. From there, they give us number three to factor by grouping. 3a is x squared plus 4x plus 8 plus 2x. And b is 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. For number uh, 3b, you may use the shortcut to see if you can factor using that. Number 4 says divide the polynomial by synthetic division. They give us 3x squared plus 16x plus 5 divided by x by, uh, minus 2. And number 5, solve the system by substitution. And they give us two uh, equations, linear equations, x plus y equals 3 and x minus y equals 1. Let's see how you do with that. I'll give you some time. Copy and go. All right, so here we go. Number one, it says write in slope intercept form, which means we need to solve for y, yes? Does this seem familiar? Okay, good. So then minus 12 minus 12, we end up with negative 3y equals negative 6x minus 12. So far so good, yes? Yeah. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, so we end up with y equals, and then negative 6 divided by negative 3, that's 2x. Negative 12 divided by negative 3, that's positive 4. And that should look familiar, right? Yeah, we did this yesterday. My goodness. Where do I start to graph? At positive 4, right? So then I go 1, 2, 3, 4. Some of you are like, are you serious? I didn't notice that. Yep. Straight up like that. What's my slope? The slope is the coefficient of x. That means 2 over 1. Two steps up, one to the right. Plot your point. Do it again. Two steps up, one to the right. Plot your point. Graph your line. And there you go. Woo! Let's go. Tweezy. All right. Number two. Graph f of x equals x cubed without a table. By now, we should know that this one, once again, it also crosses through the point of origin, that's our vertex, and it looks something like this. Yes, so far so good? Okay, however, they want us to move it according to this. Tell your neighbor what's going to happen according to this. Oh, let me put the little cube here. There it is. Yeah, now it's okay. So, let's see, according to that, what's our new vertex I then? 5, 2, that means 5 to the right, 2 up, that is correct. So at 5, 2, it's going to be moved over to this side. So the new cubic should be going something like that. So far so good, yeah? That's g of x. You're like, Mr. Q, it seems like we're doing more graphing this second semester. Like, hello? Hello? All right, let's go to... Three, what's the first thing we need to check? Standard form, so this becomes x squared plus 4x plus 2x plus 8. Some of you factored it the way it is. That's okay, but I need it in standard form first. Group, GCF here is x, we're left with x plus 4. GCF here is 2, we're left with x plus 4. Therefore, my factors are x plus 4 and x plus 2. Hands if you got that. B, I said try the shortcut, yes? Did, 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 that's 12. 7, factors of 12 that add up to 7. 4 and 3, and I'm going to use the shortcut, let's see. My leading coefficient is 2, so I'm going to make two fractions. Can I simplify this fraction more? Yeah, that becomes 1 half, is that correct? So that means 1x plus 2. Can I simplify this fraction? No, so that's 2x plus 3. Those are my factors. Hands if you got that. Be good. Let's go to long division, I mean synthetic division. So this one, if we set it equal to 0, our divisor is going to be 2. Is this in standard form? Yes. Coefficients are 3, 16, and 5. 3, 16, and 5. 
bring down the 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Combine 22. 2 times 22 is 44. Combine that's 49. We started with an x squared. That means this is 3x plus 22. And the remainder is 49 over x minus 2. Ooh, let's go. So that was good, yeah? Okay, uh, for number five, hopefully you already finished. Turn to your neighbor, let them know what you got for number five. Should have gotten two and negative one. Hands if you got that. Okay, good. All right, if you did it, what is the first thing we need to do? We need to change one of the equations and solve it for one variable. Which one do you want to solve, the top one or the bottom one? The bottom one, so I'm going to go with the top one. So I'm going to subtract x, subtract x. So that means we're left with y equals negative x plus 3. What does that mean? That on the second equation, instead of writing y, what am I going to write? Negative x plus 3. So that means I need to bring down the x, the minus, and in there, I'm going to substitute negative x plus 3. So I distribute the negative. That becomes x plus x minus 3 equals 1, which means this is 2x minus 3 equals 1, plus 3 plus 3. 2x equals 4. Divide by 2. x equals 2. Did we get that? Yes? And how do we find y? Well, I'm going to substitute that into any of the equations. I'm going to use the one that I already solved over here. So it's y equals negative 2 plus 3. What is negative 2 plus 3? y equals 1. And there it is. This is my solution. However, what does that mean? Tell your neighbor what that means. Wake up. What does that mean, guys? It means what? Hector. Where the two graphs intercept. Yes, if I was to ask you to graph these two, that's where they intercept. Now, I've been giving you these so that I can get your brain ready for today. Today it's going to be kind of like riding a bike, but I'm going to throw like fire and stuff. So, that's why I was giving you this practice, okay? All right, agenda for today. Warm up number 65, systems of equations, and tonight you have pages 197, 198, evens only. Now, for those of you watching uh, online, uh, if you're not here, go to Canvas. You can get those two pages from Canvas. Go to the quadratic equation module. Those of you that are here, you should be able to get those from your uh, textbook, or once again, go to Canvas, get it on on the module, quadratic equations, or also you can click on the shortcut for the textbook online, yeah? Yes, Mr. Q. All right, good. We good? How about now? All right, so a synchronous code, uh, so for those of you that are going to need to uh, Follow along with the uh, Nearpod in case you uh, fall behind on the notes right now when you get started. Uh, our synchronous code is HCV6G. 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 All right. And last night's home play were only six problems. And you can turn that in on Canvas later on just for the sake of time. I'm going to leave the window open until 4. And tonight's home play is pages 197, 198, evens only. So get a Cornell note ready, please, so we can get started. I'll give you some time for that. You do need a fair model. You do need a fair model. Get that ready, please. All right. So here we go. Our objective for today, I can solve systems of equations, linear and quadratic. I can solve systems of equations which are linear and quadratic. Now, what is the main idea today? Systems of equations. Now, we already covered systems, I think it was the second week of school, 
When we did a review for Algebra 1 at the beginning, we just did a simple uh, system, kind of like the one in the warm-up that I've been giving you. Some of you are like, I don't remember, Mr. Q. Well, tamales, hello. Anyways, so now, today we're going to be working with now quadratic and linear systems, since we've been working with quadratics quite a bit. So what are systems of equations? Here we go. Well, before I give you the uh, fair model, look up really quick. Uh, systems of equations, quick review from Algebra 1, those of you that loved Algebra 1, you guys remember, yeah? There's three ways of solving a system of equations. It's by graphing, we know how to graph, yes. By substitution, which is the one we've been using on the warm-up, yes. Mm -hmm. And the third one, which, did we cover that? We haven't covered that, but, I mean, it's in Algebra 1, hopefully you remember. It's called elimination or combination, where you combine both uh, equations and then all of a sudden you find a solution, so on and so forth. All right. Next, look up, please. Don't copy this. I'm just reviewing to get your noodle ready. With quadratic equations, there's five different ways of solving quadratic equations. The first way is by completing the square. Have we been using that? Yes. How about by using the quadratic formula? Remember that one? Yes. X equals minus B plus minus. How about by square roots? Yes. How about by graphing? Yes. And how about by factoring? Have we been factoring? Now, out of all of them, I think you guys have been using the most the square roots and by factoring. Those are the ones that you like the most. Completing the square, you like it, but it's extensive. Uh, graphing as well, it's extensive, and some of you I know it's kind of like uh, uh, your greens, right? Some of you that don't, don't like eating greens, you're like, oh, there you go. And quadratic formula, of course, you need to know that. Anyway, so today, uh, we're going to be using these methods, but specifically, I'm going to be talking about factoring and graphing, maybe square roots. Uh, so with that said, here we go. Systems of equations, what are they? Write this down. The set of two or more equations that have the same variable. Well, that's straightforward. Systems of equations, the set of two or more equations that have the same variables. Example y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6, and x minus y equals negative 3. You can write a bracket, or you don't have to write a bracket, but as long as they're together, it's a system. Is it two equations? Yes. Do they have the same variables? Yes, x, y, x, y. Okay, here's another example. y plus 3x equals 0, and y minus 6 equals negative 3x squared. Once again, is it two or more equations? Yes. Do they have the same variables? Yes. All right. So if these are systems of equations, obviously because it's two or more equations and they have the same variables, look at this none example. Tell your neighbor why that one's not a system. Why is that one not a system of equations? So let's see. Do they have uh, two or more equations? Yes. But do they have the same variables? No. no. That's why it's not a system. So, hashtag what? What makes it a system? Tell me number of hashtag, please. Hashtag what? Hashtag. Hashtag what? Bella, go. Hashtag same variables. Hashtag, and I'm going to write two or plus EQs. Yeah? Two or more? Yeah? Okay. Pretty straightforward, yeah? Now, I'm not going to go around elaborate it anymore. It's straightforward. Does anybody have any questions on what systems are? Okay, because we're going to go straight into the practice. Ready? All right. On the big graph paper, I purposefully, purposefully left a big strip of blank on the side so you can do all the work there. Well, you're going to need all that space plus the top, I believe. So, here we go. Example one. Copy this. And it reads way at the top. Make sure you uh, use as much as you can from your paper all the way to the top. 
on the big graph paper, big graph paper. It reads, solve the system by substitution and graphing. And they give us the system bracket y minus 6x equals x squared uh, plus 5. And the second equation, y minus x equals 1. Copy that. All right, here we go. So, it says solve the system by substitution and graphing. Okay, writing utensils down, look up to the screen. I'm going to do two steps, then I'll have you copy, and then we're going to finish off the whole thing together because we should know what to do after that. Okay, here it goes. Substitution. What does that mean, Mr. Q? Well, we've been using substitution to solve systems on the warm-up, haven't we? Okay, so let's see. What was the main premise for substitution? That one of the equations has to be solved for one of the variables. So I can solve the top one for y or x, or the bottom one for y or x, which is the easiest. So if, if I want to solve the bottom one, I'm going to leave y by itself. So that means I would do what? Plus x plus x. So then we end up with y equals x plus 1. Hold on. Before uh, you copy this down, look up. We no longer are going to use this one right here. We're going to use this one. So what does that mean, Mr. Q? That on the first equation, this one, instead of y, what am I going to write? x plus 1, which means I need to bring this one down and write negative 6x equals to x squared plus 5, but I'm going to substitute for y the x plus 1. Copy that. And once again, guys, make sure as we are going through these that require multi-steps. If you're one of those that, that, uh, that the different colors help you because we're going to be using different colors, get your colors ready, please. All right, so let's see what we did. We solved one of the equations for one variable. We solved the second one for y. There it is. But since it's substitution method, we substituted this equation to the first by substituting y by what? x plus 1. Next, we're going to combine to make it a quadratic. Here we go. Can I combine stuff right here? Yeah. I end up with what? x minus uh, 6x, that's negative 5x plus 1 equals to x squared plus 5. Okay. And, and we're doing this together. This, this next part's going to be together because we should be able to do the rest together. Now, what kind of equation do we have here now, guys? It's a quadratic, right? So when we solve quadratic equations, what was the main thing to do? To leave it equal to what? Zero. So we already have x squared in this on this side. So what do I do on this side to make it equal to zero? plus 5x and minus 1, plus 5x minus 1. So that gives us 0 equals x squared plus 5x. 5 minus 1 is 4. How are we doing? Good? Okay. Next, can we solve them? Yeah, what method do you want to use? Back, you don't want to graph? No. <laughs> Factory. All right. Did, 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 did. We got four on top, five on the bottom. What factors of four add up to five? Four and one or one and four. Can we use a shortcut to get our factors? Yeah, because this one doesn't have a number, so then we do x plus four, x plus one equals to zero. Next step, what do I do? Set them equal to zero, yeah. X plus one equal to zero. X plus four equal to zero. That's all. Minus one minus one. X equals negative one. 
minus 4 minus 4, x equals negative 4. Okay, now let's think about the warm-up. Was I done when I just got a value for x? No. What do I need to do now? Find the value for what? Yeah. Y. Therefore, check this out, I'm going to bring this one down. I'm going to write it twice. Y equals x plus 1. Y equals x plus 1. Why twice? Tell you never why did I write it twice. Yeah, because we have x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 4. So I'm going to substitute in here y equals plus 1, y equals plus 1. And first I'm going to substitute this one, which is negative 1. And over here is what? Negative 4. Is everybody following up right there? Yes, Mr. Q. All right, therefore, what is my first y? y equals 2, 0. How about the second one? y equals negative 3. So that means we have how many solutions? All right, let me write them out. x, I'm sorry, the first one. x is what? Negative 1, comma what? Negative 1. Let me draw an arrow for those of you that are kind of like following. Negative 1 what? Zero. 0. There you go. The second one. Negative 3 what? Oh, my bad. Negative 4. Yeah, I did that on purpose if you were paying attention. Oh. <laughs> negative 4, negative 3. These are my solutions. And let me draw an arrow for this one as well. And let's highlight this. And uh, tell your neighbor what that means. What does that mean? Tell your neighbor, please. Those are the points where what? Where both graphs what? Intersect. Intersect. That is correct. If we were to graph them, which we are, it's easier to graph. Let's go. All right. So check this out. Before we do anything on your graph paper, let's plot these two points in green. Let's plot the points in green. Negative 1, 0. Negative 1, 0 is about right there. And negative 4, negative 3. Negative 4, negative 3. So we're predicting that both graphs are going to intersect at those two points. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Which means what, Mr. Q? Which means we need to graph them now. We need to graph this first one, and then we need to graph the second one. So watch. So I'm going to rewrite the system over here. But I'm going to solve it for y so I can uh, use the table to graph this one. So what do I need to do to leave y by itself for this one, guys? Add 6x to each side, add 6x, which means I'm left with y equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. So both of it? How about the second one? <coughs> Is it already solved for y? Yeah, it's right here. So I'm just going to bring this over here, and I'm going to write y equals x plus 1. All right, which would be the easiest to graph right now, as it is? The second one, right? All right, so where do I start? At positive 1 of y. Let's plot our point at positive 1, which is right there. What is our slope? The coefficient of x, which is what? 1. That means 1 over 1. That means one step up, one to the right, plot your point. Do it again, one step up, one to the right, plot your point, do it again, one step up, one to the right, plot your point, graph your line. I'm going to graph it in red. 
And what you guys notice is that going through those predicted points, oh snap. Okay, so we're done with the linear. Now we need to graph which one? The quadratic. Now check this out. For the quadratic, before I make a table, I'm going to make a table over here, X, Y. I want to know what domain I'm going to use. Now, look up really quick before you uh, do anything else. Look up. Between what or my bad. Let me repeat that again. Here are my two possible solutions, yes? What would be the domain that I'm going to cover between those two points? Domain meaning what would be the x values? Let me highlight it in case you don't see it. Look up. According to what I see, this one and this one, so that means it's going to go anywhere from 0 up to here, but I'm going to go 1 extra. So what would be my domain from negative 5 to what? Zero. To 0. So my domain here I'm going to write negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. All right, so let's get cracking. I'm going to rewrite this one right here. Why? I'm going to change the font so you guys can see the difference. Y equals parentheses squared plus 6 parentheses plus 5. So, what's my first value that I need to input? Negative 5, yeah? So, I'm not going to write the whole thing. I'm just going to write negative 5 squared plus 6 times negative 5 plus 5. Ready? So, what is negative 5 squared? Um, 25 was 6 times negative 5? Uh, negative, 30. negative 30 plus 5. So what is 25 plus 5? 30 minus 30 is? Yeah. 0. That goes right there. Let's do it again. Next value, negative 4. Negative 4. What is negative 4 squared? 16 plus negative 4 times Six, that's negative 24 plus 5. So 16 plus 5 is 21 minus 24. Very good. Negative 21. No, negative 3. Not bad. Negative 3. Is that correct? Go so check my work. 21 minus 24 is negative 3. Okay. Next value. Negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 5. What is negative 3 squared? 9 minus 18 plus 5. What is 9 plus 5? 14 minus 18? Negative 4. Next value, I'm going to do it over here on the side. Negative 2 squared. Uh, plus 6 times negative 2 plus 5. So this is 4, negative 12 plus 5. So 4 plus 5 is 9 minus 12. That's negative 3. What do you guys notice? Look up. It's starting to bend, right? It's a parabola. So what would be this next value? 0. Yes, that is correct. So we went from 0, negative 3, negative 4, negative 3, 0. So the only thing we need to figure out is this one. So let's see. 0 squared, 6 times 0 is 0, so that leaves us with 5. Let's plot our points. Negative 5, 0. Negative 4, negative 3. Oh, snap. Negative 3, negative 4. Negative 2, negative 3. Negative 1, 0. Oh, snap. And 0, 5. From left to right. Ain't that crazy? We graph the two graphs, and do they intersect at the two points that we predicted with algebra? 
Yes, it does, but we need to indicate it, yes? So with green, I want you to point to them, so highlight them, this one and this one, point to them, and write solutions. Why are they solutions? Because that's where both graphs intersect. Let's see, from one to five, how comfortable do you feel with this? Yeah, five, five, four, five, fours, yeah. This should be like fresh in your noodle, okay? So I'm gonna give you one to do by yourself. I'm gonna leave this one up here so you can have it as a guide. And then uh, we'll see how you do, yes? Yes. All right, once again, here goes the process one more time to make sure we got it. What is the first thing that we need, needed to do? It said to solve by what? Substitution, that's all algebra, which means I need to solve one of the two equations for y. I solved the second one, there it is. That means that I needed to substitute that one in here, so I brought this one down and substituted instead of y, I wrote x plus one. Combine and then set it equal to zero. From there we use factoring to solve, there it is. But that only gave us two x values. We needed also two y values which means we brought one of the two equations, which was the easiest one, the second one, substituted those values, and that's how we found our solutions. To graph, we use the linear, the slope-intercept form. We started with a y-intercept, and then the slope went up, went to the right, graphed that one. And then from there, we solved the other one for y, set it equal to y. And then from there, all we did is identify what would be the domain between what points, I mean, what values of x are the two points found, and then we said from negative 5 to 0, and that's how we substituted values to get our range. Okay? All right, here we go. Example 1 cube, write this down. You can do that on the back. I included uh, two little graphs with extra space. And it says solve the system by substitution and graphing. So you don't need to copy the instructions, just copy the system. System given, y minus 6 equals x squared plus 5x, and y minus 3 e uh, equals x. I'll give you some time for that. Copy and go. All right, let's see where we're at. It says to solve by substitution. So, which means one of the equations needs to solve for y. Which one did you solve for y, um, Sophia? The bottom one, so you did plus 3, plus 3, so you should have gotten y equals x plus 3. Hands if you got it to right there. Since it's substitution, we need to substitute this one into the first equation. So here, instead of y, what are we going to substitute there? x plus 3, yes? Which means you brought this one down, then you wrote negative 6 equals x squared plus 5x, and instead of y at the beginning, you wrote x plus 3. Hands if you got it to right there. From there, we can combine stuff. Is that correct? So here becomes this 2. So it's x minus 3 equals x squared plus 5x. And to solve that quadratic, it needs to be equal to what? 0. So that means what do I do to this side right here? What do I do here? Chain. Subtract x and add 3, yes. Subtract x and add 3, yes, that is correct. So that is 0 equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. So far the good, yeah? From there, what method do you want to use to solve, Hector? Factor. Factor. 3 and 4. What factors of 3 add up to 4, everyone? 1 and 3, so my factors are x plus 1, x plus 3, all that equal to 0. Next step, we set it equal to 0, each of, each of those, right? x plus 1 equal to 0, x plus 3 equal to 0, and solve, minus 1, x equals negative 1, minus 3, x equals negative 3, but we're not done, because that's only the x value, which means what? I need to bring the other equation, doesn't matter which one, I'm going to bring the smallest one down and write it two times, yes? y equals x plus 3, y equals x plus 3. Why twice? Because we have two x values. 
the first one goes there, so it's negative 1. So we got y equals negative 1 plus 3, so y equals 2. The second one is what? Negative 3. So y equals negative 3 plus 3, so y equals to 0. Therefore, my x value is negative 1. What was my y value for that one? 2. How about for this one? x value is negative 3. What is my y value? 0. And what are those? These are my, or what are those? Solutions. <laughs> These are my, <laughs> you guys remember that? What are those? People. Yeah, one time uh, somebody at Frank Wright, very, like I was wearing my nice red and black shoes, and they're like, Mr. Q, what are those? And I'm like, oh, they're uh, Under Armour. And, they're like, and they were like, ha, 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 ha. Anyways. Solutions. What does that mean? Tell you never what this means. Yeah, the two points where they intersect. So I'm going to plot those. Negative 1, 2. <coughs> and negative 3, 0. So, we need us now that we're done uh, solving it with substitution, let's solve it by graphing. So I'm going to rewrite my system over here. So the first one, I add 6 to each side, and that leaves me with y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. And then the second equation is already solved for y. I'm just going to bring it over. y equals x plus 3. All right. So to graph the second one, the easiest one, I start with what? Positive 3, which is right there. What is my slope? 1 up, 1 to the right. 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 Graph my line. Next, before I make my table, I need a domain. Let's find out what the domain. Between what x values are those two possible solutions found, guys? Between what x values? Negative 4 to what? To 0, yeah. Between negative 4 and 0, so my domain is negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. All right. So I want to go a little bit faster. Let me write this over here. y equals squared plus 5 parentheses plus 6. All right. So what is my first value? My first value is negative 4. So look up, please. Let's do this one together. What is negative 4 squared? 5 times negative 4. Plus 6, so 6 plus 16 is 22 minus 20, that's 2, okay? Next, what is negative 3 squared? 9, negative 3 times 5, negative 15 plus 6. What is 9 plus 6? Minus 15, 0. Next, negative 2 squared, 4, negative 2 times 5, negative 10 plus 6. What is 4 plus 6? 10 minus 10, 0. What do you think this value is going to be right here? Two, and then the last one, zero, zero, and that leaves us with six. Plot that. Negative four, two, negative four, two. Negative three, zero. Negative two, zero. And negative one, two. And zero, six. Let's graph that. Make sure you make it bend a little bit right there. Right? Bend, not straight from that point to that point. You have to bend it right there. All right. So, what does that mean, everyone? That means that this one and that one are my what? Solutions. From 1 to 5, how comfortable do you feel with these? 5, 5, 5, yes. Tonight's home play on page 197, 198, it's all that. Tutoring after school, be there or be elsewhere.
All right, I'll stop right there. Those of you watching online, make sure uh, you go get the play sheets on campus. Peace.